In this video, I'm going to introduce the way climatic projections are made. I'll take an example, that of the evolution of temperatures on the global surface. On the first slide, you can see all of the ingredients needed for a climatic projection. A climatic projection is an answer provided to a scenario on evolution of greenhouse effect gases, aerosols and radiative forcing, thanks to a climatic model. The two main ingredients absolutely necessary are scenarios for evolution of greenhouse effect gases on the left-hand side of the slide, and obviously a climatic model, which is shown succinctly on the right-hand side of the picture. Evolution scenarios regarding greenhouse effect gases and climatic model are not sufficient. More ingredients are needed to perform a climatic projection. Scientists also use an indication on the evolution of natural forcing, for instance, solar forcing, what is the variation in the intensity of solar rays and volcanic forcing. In the absence of uh, accurate indications, we can use the 11-year evolution cycle for solar forcing. The projections start today and they will continue for several decades until the end of the 21st century, but the scientists need a baseline state. How do we start? And the baseline state is obtained with the historical simulation covering all of the historical period for which a climatic model is used, except that this time it's forced by the evolution of greenhouse effect gases on a historical base, data recorded in polar ice or the evolution of natural forcing such as uh, volcanic eruptions uh, or variations in solar radiation. Once gas, greenhouse effect gas uh, evolution is recorded, it is possible to make a projection. Here we have the IPSL model, evolution of the average temperature on the global surface between 1850 until the end of the 21st century. In black, we see the evolution of the temperature in the historic simulation, and the end of the historic simulation serves to initialize the projection. In red, we have the temperature calculated between 2005 and 2100. Now, in the RCP 8.5 scenario, our CO2 and other gas emissions and the simulated uh, warming at the end of the uh, century reach plus 4.5 degrees versus the current temperature. With the same model, several projections were made, each linked with one given scenario of the evolution of greenhouse effect gases. Here we have the four conventional projections used by all the scientists in the uh, IPCC report. In red, the RCP 8.5, temperature increases by 4.45 degrees. And at the bottom, we have the 2.6 scenario where the temperature would only increase by 1.27. The results shown here were established with the single climatic model. Now, the international community develops about 40 climatic models and all the results were combined in the last IPCC report. And you can see a summary here, the projection of uh, surface temperature abnormalities for approximately 40 different models for the same two scenarios. At the top, the RCP 8.5, at the bottom, the RCP 2.6 scenario. Now, in order to use both models, scientists calculate the average of all the uh, projections, the part that is contained both in the red and blue area, and around the curve there is re representation of the uh, divide, the, the, the delta between the two models, the uncertainty regarding temperature projection for the next decades. Both climatic models were used in order to project the uh, temperature evolution for all four scenarios. This data allows us to obtain a certain uncertainty for scenario 8.5. The uncertainty ranges from 2.6 to 4.8 degrees Celsius by the end of the 21st century versus the last 20 ones. The use of a climatic model allows us to look into temperature evolution, average and global, but these climatic models also allow us to look into the evolution of local and regional temperatures. 
two maps showing you changes in temperature at the end of the 21st century compared with the last 20 years. For the RCP85 scenario, the highest one were greenhouse effect gas emissions increase considerably. And on the left-hand side, the evolution of temperatures for the low scenario, the RCP2.6 scenario. We see that the two maps are very different. There's a much greater increase in temperatures and emissions in the 8.5 scenario, up to 10 degrees difference in the Arctic area. And uh, the temperature increase would be greater on the continents than in the oceans, whereas in the RCP 2.6, temperatures are lower, although there is a huge difference between oceans and the continental areas. But the overall temperature would be temperature increase would be much lower in this scenario. Beyond the global and regional aspects, the climate models also allow us to look at other aspects in temperature evolution. I'm showing you two examples of uh, extreme changes in temperature. On the right hand side, you have the number of tropical nights, nights during which the average temperature is in excess of 20 degrees, which is what happens in tropical countries. The climatic model shows that the number of tropical nights simulated per year will increase more dramatically in some scenarios. In the 8.5 scenario, where the emissions are greatest, the number of tropical nights in average for the whole globe would increase by 50 or 60 days per year by the end of the 21st century. Whereas on the right hand side, you also have another extreme event, the number of uh, freezing days per year. And uh, you see the evolution depending on the type of scenario used by climatologists. In conclusion, I'd like to remind you that for identical scenarios, models will project different changes in temperature, which gives us an idea of the uncertainty around the projection. Models project different changes in temperature, but this really exemplifies the fact that models are built in a different way based on different assumptions, and each of the model has its own sensitivity, climatic sensitivity to an an identical increase in greenhouse effect gases. But the main uncertainty is not the climatic uncertainty, but rather the uncertainty connected with the chosen scenario. The red and blue curves have shown that they are different, even when we take into consideration the uncertainty and the error bar regarding the average temperature change. And also the temperature evolution on the regional level is very is varied and not homogeneous with huge temperature differences between the northern and southern hemispheres. And models also give access to uh, time scale information. We have uh, more extreme hot or warm events and less extreme cold events following this uh, change in the temperature.